So this is the real test for our new rig today to see if it could run the EOS R5 8K footage. We're gonna be testing 8K raw, we're not using any proxies, and we're playing everything at full res. So let's see how long it takes to export our 8K raw timeline and to see if there's any lost frames in playback. So today, we're finally upgrading my old rig that I built in 2013. So this thing really used to crush 1080p timelines and it really started to struggle when I started doing 4K. We upgraded in anticipation of the R5 coming out, but because there's no files available for download, we've downloaded 8K red raw files that are closest to what the Canon R5 8K files are going to be. So the R5 8K footage is a bit rate of 2.6 gig a second, which is huge. The $54,000 RED Monstro camera that can shoot amazing 8K footage is only around 300 megabytes a second, but that's higher quality footage, even though the megabytes per second is lower because of the amazing and really efficient RED RAW format. But it's a great comparison because if it can play the RED RAW footage, then it should do just fine with the R5 8K footage. We're pretty confident this rig build is gonna work, but it's really all guesswork and there's a high chance we're gonna fail. So let's find out if it stacks up. But before you say, man, why wouldn't you just use a tiny proxy file and work with that instead of watching it in 8K or even 4K? Well, you definitely can, but I love being able to look at my footage in its full resolution or at least 4K and really close to what I've captured in terms of quality. It means that I can color grade perfectly and it also means I get to experience what the viewer gets to see and that really helps me make decisions when I'm editing and it also changes how I actually edit. And I really want this new rig so that I can play 4K Ultra games with pretty high FPS uh, at the end of the day to unwind. So let's do this. So for the graphics card, we've got the NVIDIA 2080 Ti, which is awesome because Premiere Pro now supports CUDA cores, but now they're being optimized, which means everything runs really fast, and it's just generally going to crush video for me. So for the CPU or the brains itself, we've got the Ryzen 3900X, which is 12 cores and 24 threads. It's pretty beasty. And really importantly, we have a two terabyte SSD drive, which is the 970 Evo M.2 SSD. So this thing can read footage at 3.5 gigabytes a second and write up to 3.2 gig per second, meaning we're not being limited by a slow drive anymore or being bottlenecked. We have more than enough for the EOS R5 8K video files, which are read at around about 2.6 gig per second. For my bigger and slower storage device, I've got a Drobo, which can store up to 40 to 50 terabytes of footage. But for my current projects, I move them onto my desktop so that my fast SSD really smashes them. So now for the good stuff. All right, so let's look at my 8K timeline with the red footage that is gonna be way more intense than the R5 8K footage. So basically, if it can play this, it's gonna be able to play the R5 footage. Now we need to see if we get any dropped frame indicators, which is basically indicated by this little green dot over here. I'm also recording with screen capture software. So that's actually capturing 4K as well. So that's gonna be a massive drain on my computer's resources. So I may need to turn that off if we get any drop frames. So straight away, all green so far. There we go, at the very end there, we're getting some drop frames. Now this is playing back at full 8K resolution. So what we can do is we can drop that down to 4K because my monitor is only uh, 4K. Everything is playing back amazing. We'll skip to the very end. I know the shot that we were having the biggest trouble with was this monkey shot. And I think that's because it was recorded at a higher bit rate or a higher codec. So if you're enjoying this or you found it useful so far, please do hit subscribe, it really helps me out. And this video has been a very big one to make, so I'd really appreciate it. So one of the things that I really wanted to test out was what the R5 is going to be pretty well known for, which is 4K 120 frames. So I've actually got a clip here from Red, which is 4K and recorded at 120 frames. So we'll play this back, see if we'll get any drop frame indicators. I'm seeing nothing here so far, which is awesome. And the footage looks pretty amazing. So we're gonna go to the next clip, which is Red labels this as skin tone, so that I guess they're doing a good job at 
capturing skin tones here. So it's people partying at some festival somewhere. Shot on a gimbal, it's actually pretty awesome. So no drop frames at all either. So, so far this rig build is looking really good. So we're gonna do our export test now. We've got a 10 minute timeline filled with primarily 8K footage. We have a few clips of 4K 120 frames. And basically we've duplicated this over 10 minutes. And we're gonna see how long this takes to export. Now we've selected maximum quality. We're exporting as 8K. Now this is a massive test of a computer. I think a lot of computers would really be overheating right now. I'm sure the OBS screen recording software is also affecting this performance. So it's probably not a true indicator of what this computer can do, but really a 35 or even 40 minute export for 10 minutes at 8K, really, really high quality, is really not too bad at all. Um, I would pretty much never export anything as 8K for more than 10 minutes. Um, I'd probably, if I got the R5, I'd really only be doing maybe a five minute little promo clip, having a bit of fun with the camera. So really impressive. So I've had this computer for the last month and one of the biggest things that I've found so far is the amount of time that I have in a day. I used to export all of my big films overnight and my whole day was really scheduled around my renders and exports. Our corporate and wedding film studio was exporting around five to 10 individual videos as a minimum per week and sometimes up to 20. This meant that if somebody asked for a small change or a slight edit, I had to prioritize that film overnight and it still really impacted my schedule for the week. Now I can make the change in Premiere right then and there, export it out and upload it within 10 minutes thanks to my fairly decent internet. On the psychological side, it meant that I didn't dread weeks where I knew I had a lot of films to edit and where I knew that I had a lot of changes to make as well. This has really been the biggest boost in productivity that I've ever seen in my life it's an investment for sure, but for someone who's working in video and demanding video every day, it's something that you can easily justify spending for yourself. I can now edit five films a week if I have to, as opposed to one or two because of the really long render times. I can now spend that extra time making sales, running my business or hanging out with my family. So for me, it's a no brainer. Our corporate jobs and big weddings were the only times that I was gonna be shooting 4K 60 raw. And before I would apply a grade, add stabilization if I had to. And if I had to put motion graphics over the top, everything would freak out. And sometimes my computer would crash um, and even Premiere would crash. So the export time for those clips were sometimes six to eight hours or more. For example, on my old rig, a 2.5 hour long, even 1080p clip used to take me like eight hours to export overnight. But now it only takes me nine to 10 minutes, which is a massive deal. It really saves me a lot of time. So guys, if you've liked this video, please do hit subscribe. Um, I've got a lot more videos like this coming out. And if you're in the photo or film industry, you're really gonna like this because I've got some tips like this video where it's really made a massive difference to my life. And I have some of those videos ready to come out soon. So if you've enjoyed this, please smash that like button. Now, if you are here purely for the filmmaking side of things, you can stop watching. But for me, I like to game with friends a little bit after a really long day, it helps me unwind. So let's quickly look at a little bit of COD that is playing in 4K. It's not ultra, I've toned things down a little bit to get more frames you can see that um, it absolutely kills games. There's only two, you can solo all of them. Yes, nice. I'll take all of that that you killed. We got a uh, party boy coming in. Mm -hmm. That was a silly place to make. One right here. Whoa, got a sniper opposite. I'm a broke. Yay, got those campers. Ah, oh, that was the sniper. Oh, 
Oh my god, that's the same guys. 